This is Hannibal here from TheHannibalTV.com, and on the line we have Gorgeous George, who was a former WCW, TNA, and ECW star. She was also part of the Gorgeous Frankenstein band and worked for Danzig, and she was the valet of Macho Man Randy Savage. So welcome to The Hannibal TV, and how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We're doing very well. Uh, we're working towards our big upcoming event, August 26th. Um, I understand you're moving away from wrestling now. You're getting into food blogging, uh, a lot of other stuff. But most people remember you from your time as Macho Man's valet in WCW. Do you want to tell us how that whole thing happened? Well, it was kind of like, well, first I want to say thank you for having me on. Um it was kind of like all out of chance type thing. Like it was totally like a fate thing. Um, I never sought out wrestling. Um, I met Randy in a weird way. I met him at the Dow house in Tampa, Florida, <laughs> kind of like a freak thing happened at night. And then we became friends and we started to date. And then uh, he asked me if I wanted to be his valet or Tori Wilson was going to be his valet. So I had a necessity, I guess I had to do it. So I did it. And, uh, it was really, I mean, it was either the people were going to take, take into me or not. So it's kind of like a 50, 50 thing. Either I can do it or I can't. And it turned out to be good. And, uh, I had a great run with wrestling. It was fun. And I learned a lot and I've traveled for like the last 22 years doing it. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting tired, <laughs> no. so, but I had a really good time. Huh? For, for Macho Man, uh, Randy Savage, before you met him, did you know who he was? Oh, yeah. Like, when I was a little kid, um, I used to watch rock and roll wrestling cartoons. <laughs> okay. And, I mean, I used to watch, you know, Hulk Hogan and him on TV with me and Gene. And when I met him the day that I actually met him, it was kind of like a surreal dream. Like, it wasn't real. Like, it didn't even come to my head that that's what it was at first. Like, I was like, who's this guy bothering me? I didn't even think that was him. And I was like, you know, last thing I'm going to be thinking about is rock and roll wrestling cartoon when, <laughs> you know, those guys like in my face outside of a strip club. Like, yeah, it was kind of weird. It was a weird situation for sure. But it all worked out good. We all, we all heard all the stories about uh, how he used to be really possessive of Elizabeth and stuff. Did you find he was like that with you or had he mellowed out by that time? Um, no, at first he was, he was fine. And then the longer that we were going out together, the worse and worse it got. And all the stories that Miss Elizabeth said were becoming true to me as well. Um, it got to the point that it got so bad that when we would go to, uh, wrestling, the wrestling shows, he would find broom closets and clean them out and make me sit in there while he went and got my food from catering because he didn't want me to make eye contact with other wrestlers. And once he started doing that and he was putting cameras in my house and all kinds of stuff like that and tapping my phone and had people following me and it got way too much. I just couldn't handle it anymore. How did it was he very, take the very, um, huh? How did he take the breakup? Not good. And, um, I think for me, like, like he, I was probably like one of the only people in the world that he could trust. And for him to think that I would do anything where he would have to, watch me like that or video it was very very hurtful to me okay. like i instantly like hated him like as soon as i found the cameras and stuff like so it was a really really bad breakup like and i never seen him again and then now he passed away after we broke up is there anything about him that uh, most people wouldn't know about him that uh, that you knew being so close to him like something that would surprise us um I know that he never wanted to have children and, um, he, as much as he was very nice to kids and stuff like that, when he was around them, he didn't want nothing to do with kids. You would, you would think he was, you know, he was into them, but he wasn't, he was like more of a, I don't know. He was very kind of selfish with his being, I guess you could say. Cause I have a son that was small when we were dating and, uh, I used to have to say things to him all the time. Like, you know, like this is like a package deal. You know, you got to pay a little attention to him. It can't just be me and you all the time. And, you know, if he had his way, he would have just, like, erased my kid. It, it was that was another problem with our relationship as well, to where it started getting like that at the end. And it just, he just couldn't handle it. 
I, you know, he uh, liked animals. He didn't like kids. Oh, on. really? What, what type of animals did he have? Oh, he was really, really into animals. I don't know if this is true or not, but I know that he, um, I heard that when he passed away, his money, if it didn't go to the wife that he married, it went to the um, ASPC, is that was it? Yeah, SPC yeah, or like, something. So. Yeah, that, you know what I mean. Like for the animal shelters and stuff. And if it didn't all go to her, I know that there was probably a big piece that was uh, donated to them. Because that's what he wanted to do. And I'm sure and some him, went to Lanny and his mother too, I imagine. Yeah, that's a whole other situation on its own too with that mess. I loved his parents very, very much. But um, I don't think Randy was was too close with his brother. <laughs> I know he wasn't. Yeah, at one point I knew his brother pretty well. I don't really get along with him anymore. Did you ever uh, have much contact with his brother? I'm sure he probably was. Um, I've, only, I've, only, I've only actually been in the same room with him like four times my entire life. And he had a lot of bad things apparently to say about me. And... Um, and the truth is, I'm actually writing a book right now, and it should be out before Christmas, and it will have a lot of the details of that relationship as well as with he, you know, with his family and stuff like that. And uh, it, I just, it's kind of funny right now, like how Lanny's all in the spotlight after he passed because he never was around when Randy was around. And the thing that bothered me about it. Uh was, I don't know if if Randy ever told you this, but he didn't want to be in the WWE Hall of Fame um, pretty adamantly, apparently. And then, obviously, something happened where they likely gave Lanny some money and Lanny gave his blessing for, for Randy to go in there. Did you Do you think uh, Randy would have wanted to go into the Hall of Fame? Um, we actually had to talk about that once. He never said whether he did or he didn't, but... I definitely think he should have been recognized for all of the achievements and how much money and all the shit he's done. Yeah. The WWE, you know what I mean? And everybody else, like, you know, it's crazy that one of the main wrestlers of all time wasn't going to get in there. And then when I found out that he was, I think that it was kind of to go. I mean, like out of everything. Oh, I think you're cutting out a bit here. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I, th I think you just cut out for like the last five it's, seconds. It's this, oh, sorry, it's this one. Um, when I found out that he was getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, I thought it was kind of crappy that I wasn't allowed to go. Apparently, Lanny had told everybody that I shouldn't be able to go. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I think they were afraid of what I would have said. But even in out of all the bad things that had ended up with me and Randy, I still wouldn't have said anything derogatory or mean about him while he's getting put over on his you know, Hall of Fame, you know, Hall of Fame day or whatever, you know what I mean? And I don't know, that was kind of like Lanny's time to shine. And it was just kind of like, I don't know, that whole, that whole thing to me is just like, whatever. Because I see him now at some of the signings and I'm just thinking to myself, there was actually a time because he was getting a check from the WWE uh, that, or WCW actually, that Randy and his contract was making sure that Lanny was getting paid. Right. But Lanny was supposed to always be ready to wrestle. And when Randy would go over there, you know, Lanny's out of shape. He doesn't care. And then Randy's like, you know, I'm getting you a check and you can't even go to the gym. I think all he did and, was dye his hair or something because he was, I think that's maybe where the heat came from because wasn't he supposed to be Gorgeous George and you ended up being Gorgeous George? Well, what it was is he didn't get over with the name. And then when me and Randy were breaking up, it was kind of like Randy was dangling that carrot over my head. And um, and I was just like, well, you know what? I, I don't need your Gorgeous George. I'll just change my name legally to George. And I did. Okay. So now I can be George all I want. Right. And Lanny can keep the gorgeous George name and put it in a vault and save it so no one can do anything with it, including him. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Now, Lanny told me before off the record, like this, the, the true story about uh, Randy and Stephanie McMahon. Did, did Randy ever tell you what happened there? Oh, he told me. <laughs> <laughs> He told me one day when we were on ecstasy on the beach, I think he didn't mean to tell me that. And then the next morning he goes, did I tell you anything last night on the beach? I'm like, 
He sure did. He knew exactly what he said, and he was like, shit, you know what I mean? Because it was kind of like the truth drug. Yeah. Once he got on that, he just started telling me everything. So <laughs> it is what it is. And, you know, she knows, he knows what it all was. You know what I mean? And that's what I had a lot to do with the heat there for a while, I guess, with him and the WWE. Yeah, I wonder what was the actual breaking point where they were like, okay, it's fine for him to do it. Yeah, I don't know. But that'd be an, I guess that's going to be all in your book. Do you want to talk a little bit about the book you're working on? It's taken, okay, it's taken me, and I'm, I'm writing it with a guy that, the King of Connecticut, Matthew Granahan. Uh, he did a book of, uh, he also did, wrote the Rough and Tumble, a book of Rough and Tumble, of MMA. And so me and him started working together like three years ago on the book, and then I, I was living in South Carolina at the time. And we were working together closely, but then I moved. So, and I've been so busy doing stuff all over the country and things that, you know, it's kind of fall to the wayside, but it's done. I just got to put the finishing touches and get the pictures for it and try to get it out before Christmas. Now, you were married so to, to one of the uh, misfits. Did you meet him in WCW when they were working in WCW? Yep. Uh, Oh, sorry. I think your phone's cutting out again. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you, yeah. Okay, yeah, this phone cuts in and out. Yeah, he, his first day of wrestling was like my last day of wrestling, and that's how we met. Okay, so it was behind the scenes at uh, Nitro or something when he was with Vampiro. Mm-hmm. And then I just seen Vampiro recently at Lucha Libre. That was nice to see him. It's been a long time. Yeah, he's, uh, he's worked for our company up here before. He's... Uh, He's a great guy. He's awesome. I love Vampiro. Really good guy. Yeah, I mean, their little stint in WCW was a, but just a couple of shows with Dr. Death. And, uh, you know, that's how it all started. And by then, me and Randy's relationship had completely fallen apart. Um, that's when I had found the cameras in my house that he had put in there. And it just, we were doing the Slim Jim stuff. And it was just everything in my power to actually get in an airplane and have to sit next to him to do the last couple things we had to do together. It was just, it was torture. And like, he started to put his hands on me at the end. And <clears throat> he did it in front of my son and just, he was completely out of control from all the steroids. Did you ask for your release uh, due to all the issues you were having with him? Or do you think he... No, he of, did it. Yeah, he <clears throat> wanted you gone right, pretty much, right? Well, he was like more or less telling them that if they hired me, then he would quit. Okay. So it was just like, it's either her or me. And then he went around and he was like blackballing me from wrestling. Like, if you try to hire George for any shows, then I'm going to sue you and this, that, and the other. And a lot of people that were booking me at the time, I kept telling them, please stop using the name Gorgeous George. Just say George Frankenstein, previous known as Gorgeous George, WCW. They were putting it on the marquee and doing all this and that. And then um, they were actually coming in one time and served me papers at the Emerald Theater in Chicago, Illinois, while I was on stage. Wow. Like, for, to sue me for these clubs and these people putting it, you know, on the marquee, Gorgeous George, and it had nothing to do with me, but you could tell somebody not to do that, and they'll turn around and do it for the, you know, people to know who I was and things like that. And it is what it is. It's been a long ride with this wrestling stuff with me. I mean, I'm completely blessed to be part of it, and I wouldn't take it back for anything, like, every day of my life. I mean, wrestling's inside me, you know, forever. And I'm, I'm so blessed to meet all the wrestlers and all the fans and everybody that's been a huge part of my 22 years of being around all this. So I'm very blessed with it. But I think it's time for me to switch gears here, man. You know, I don't want to be still sitting there in the old people sections where, you know, <laughs> when we're at the signings, I just don't want to be that guy. Yeah, exactly. Right. Were you ever actually trained to be a wrestler, or did you just kind of, like, for for your matches? Both, both. But I, Randy always had a problem with me. He didn't want me to do it because he didn't want me to get hurt. And so, like, he kind of put, he let me learn so much and then stop it. And, you know, it, it, sometimes I get mad about that because I could have been doing all kinds of other stuff in the last 20 years. But um, then again, you know, I'm already in so, so much pain as it is from the little injuries that I do have. I can't imagine, like, the girls that wrestle nowadays, how their wrestling is so, 
amazing. By the time they're my age, you know what they're going to feel like? I hate to feel that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, who, I can't. I don't want to know. <laughs> you know. Who was it that brought you to uh, ECW when you started there? It was Molly Holly. Okay. Because and she then, was uh, with Savage. I guess she managed Savage for a while too, right? Um. Yes, yeah, she did. She helped me. She's the one who was actually teaching me in Florida how to wrestle. And um, she was actually, um, I think she was living with Lanny at the time when I first met her. That's how I met her. And, oh, uh, poor thing. Know, oh, I know. I don't think she knew any better. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm sure she's got a couple stories about that one. But <laughs> That's uh, probably yeah. a whole book. Oh my God, I try not to. I try not to warn anybody under the mud, but it's just like if it's true, it's true. I mean, I'm not totally killing everybody with what I could, but it's, it is what it is. It's, it's the truth. <laughs> you know what I mean? So she made some calls for you and got you booked at ECW. Well, it was like I had been standing around for a little while, and then I talked to Just Incredible and um, who else was it? Sabu and who else was I talking to at that time? Oh, Tommy Dreamer. Okay. A whole bunch of people were just like, yeah, come down, George. And then I wasn't used to the w, uh, the ECW crowd at all. It was a complete, like, 180 compared to WCW. Those guys are rowdy, and that's, that is a whole different scene. Like, it, it was totally, it was great. I loved it. But, um, yeah, it was definitely a shock. <laughs> And what I was just, how did they treat you there? Was it was it good overall? All those people, oh, they're awesome. I love Tommy Dreamer. He's awesome. Uh, I actually just seen him at um, Lucha Libre, and he was telling me, because I just moved back to Jersey, so, you know, he's got the house of hardcore in Philly, and I haven't went that way yet to say hi, but I'm sure I will. He's more hooked up. Was it Dreamer the guy you hooked up with TNA as well? You know what? I'm thinking, I can't remember who that was. I think it was Jeff Jarrett at the time. Okay. It could have been Jeff Jarrett or it was uh, Jericho. I can't remember. I know that I was talking to Conan and them as well, and I don't, it's been so long. I cannot really remember. You know, it's funny that you asked me that. Maybe I should start thinking. There's pieces of my mind from being through all this. Like, unless someone brings it up, I don't even think about it or remember it. You know what I mean? Or showed me a video clip. I'm like, oh my God, I haven't. I never even thought about that that memory and like since it happened, you know what I mean? Right. How did you like your time in, in TNA overall? Um, I wasn't there but just a little bit and what happened was, well, this is my interpretation of what happened. I'm not really sure to this day what happened. But I almost I was with Sabu and we were traveling together and we went to the show at TNA. Well, when we went to the airport he had gotten hurt and they'd put him on some kind of medication and it was making him completely kind of, you know, he was out of it that day. He was in a lot of pain and I was helping him carry his luggage. Well, we went up to the, um, the ticket counter and something was wrong with my ticket. So him just trying to be my friend, he called Terry, <laughs> Terry Taylor. And he said, what's wrong with George's ticket? And then he started screaming at him and saying, you know what, George, I'm going to tell you to get effed. I was like, Oh no. <laughs> And then the next day I called because I was supposed to be on the show. And then they were like, didn't even call me back. Okay. So to this, to this day, I have no clue if that had something to do with it or what. A lot of people, I, I don't have much experience with them, but a lot of people really hate Terry Taylor. Do, do you have any idea why that could be? Um, I don't know. I hear, I hear good stories. I hear bad, but everybody's got those, you know, so I don't know the truth about any of it because I don't know him like that. You know, I've only met him a couple times and every time I've ever met him, he's been really nice. Okay. So, yeah. So, af so after TNA, you did a lot of independence and... Uh... Yeah, I kind of went backwards in my career. Like, most time people do the independence first. Well, I did a last one. <laughs> so, I have been working this East Coast and so much there for a while. Um, I just saturated it with going to indie shows like all weekend long and doing signings and it's kind of funny now because when I do signings like in New York, New Jersey, any of these states over here, I know everybody when they come to the place, you know, it's like, hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while, you know. So, you know, I did work here a lot going to these shows and it really shows when I know everybody when I go to the shows now. <laughs> so, yeah. So were That's you doing said, that like, while you were uh, in the band? Were you doing that while you were in the band? 
Yes, and I was also feature dancing um, on a on a feature dancing circuit for uh, Continental Agency and the uh, Lee Network. I guess they like book porno people too, but it was pretty good. I mean, I did seven years of that and made a lot of money. And um, my ex husband actually used to come with me when I danced, and he was like my Lily. And so in between us doing the band and me doing signings and stuff like that and him doing signings, then we just went with me and I would get booked at all these places across the country for the weekend to dance. And is that how you got involved in the in the video side of it too? I'm not sure if you actually did any any like intercourse. Well, no, what it, that video that's on there is it was I worked at like this webcam thing for like two days okay. when I was like really super young and it was before I got famous and then when I got famous the people that made that tape just like hung that over my head. Like they were going to completely, you know, like Randy even tried to give them money to tell them to stop. So they were really like blackmailing us. Okay. And, uh, they put it out there anyways. And apparently that's been through a couple of hands and I've tried to, I tried to stop it, but there's no stopping it. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. It was that place that I worked at was actually like the very first place for webcam girls in the world. And I just so happened to work there. I didn't like it. I just did it to get money to move into an apartment. And then Randy, when it came out on video, they had put his name on it, like the Macho Man Randy Savage's girlfriend. It, um, he actually sued them for $1.5 million, and I didn't get a penny of any of it, and it's me in the video. It's, it's horrible. It ruined my life, and I honestly think that, you know, I was really young when I did that, and I was doing it because I was more or less starving, and so those people took one of my hardships and turned it into something to ruin my life. And, you know, once something's on the internet, it's there forever. You know, so like I always tell these young girls that are getting into stuff like that. Now I'm like, you know, you're going to be my age one day and you're going to, that stuff's still going to be stuck on there and you're not going to be able to get it off. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now there's also a lot of wrestlers that have actually gone into pornography which you weren't yeah. in, you did like a little video, which I don't think showed much. I haven't seen it. I just read it in your uh, bio. But uh, what do you think? Like China did it, Sunny did hardcore stuff. Uh, uh, no, I'm not in all that. I got kids. Yeah. No, but like, okay. what do you think about wrestlers doing that? Uh, even all these I, cell phone cam- uh, that are supposedly. I mean, I mean, to me, it's. To me, it's to each his own. I mean, your sexuality and the way that you portray yourself and how you how you care about your sexuality out there to the public is up to your own discretion. Um, if you got kids and stuff like I do, you know, that video really, really affected my family when it came out. You know, my son was in high school at the time, and it's just, it, it was bad. And, you know, like, then people could have costed something really bad in our family to happen because they wanted to make money off me. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the world can be a bad thing. And, um, I wouldn't recommend it to nobody. I mean, cause someday that little money that you get is not going to last and that tape will last forever. Right. And it always seems to come back to haunt you. It doesn't matter. Even though things are in your past, they do affect your future. No matter what anybody says. I mean that, you know, nowadays anything on the internet is there to stay. So That's if you're true. taking pictures on your phone, videos on your phone, and you don't want anyone ever to see them, and you don't want that to get out in any way, what if somebody loses their cell phone? You know what I mean? Like, I've lost my cell phone, like, 13 times in one year. And just think if I would have had nasty stuff on there, and then people would have been able to get that. You know what I mean? I'd be in the same position back again, you know? Now, you were also telling me earlier that uh, you've been in the uh, marijuana growing industry, medical marijuana, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been doing for like the last five years. How did you get involved in that? Um, uh, well, one of my, one of the guys that I used to see is, um, actually be real from Cypress Hill. And if you guys don't know anything about him, he's pretty deep into the cannabis community. And, um, I've always been interested in growing it and, uh, you know, like the health benefits from it. I don't even smoke marijuana. I mean, I do like, like just to try it or like in the pens or whatever, but like to sit around and get high, I used to be like that all the time. And then one day I just wasn't getting nothing done, man. I would just sit around and veg out and I just quit smoking. But I mean, now I will, I can't sleep or whatnot, but it's not like a big thing in my life. But, you know, I have, I have friends that have cancer that are, that don't have cancer anymore because of this. 
And so there's other real. ways to take it other than smoking yeah. that's that are right. healthier ways to take it as well. I mean, I'm all about anything that has to help health benefits. I'm actually a very healthy person, even though I like to drink beer, but I mean, on a daily basis, I do watch what I eat and I take vitamins every day and I have for my entire life. And, you know, I try to stay healthy, but yeah, the whole cannabis industry in California where I was working is it, just blown up, you know, it's created a lot of jobs for people. It's saving people's lives. You know, it's, it's is it definitely fully legal there now. Um, yeah, but I mean, there's, there's things you have to do. You have to have the card and you have to have so much on you and, you know, there's certain places you can and cannot do it and stuff like that. You know, there's still rules, but it's awfully funny. Like I was living in Alabama before I moved back to Jersey and before I was living in uh, California again. And a friend of mine had a $20 bag of weed in his car and he got pulled over and they wanted to give him five years Yeah, that's for a little bag of weed. And it's just like some states are legal, some states aren't. And, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous all the people that are in jail for it. Yeah, and I think like, Florida, it's illegal too, but like Colorado. Instead of spending illegal. taxpayers' money on people that smoke weed and get busted with some weed and, and housing them in jail and prisons, they need to start putting that money towards education for the schools and other things that they could be doing with that than using it on stupid stuff like that. It's just, it's overwhelmingly dumb. I mean, I don't know. And it's <laughs> going to be fully legal here in Canada in uh, October, the the new government here is legalizing it for recreational yeah. use. So in my opinion, it's way safer than alcohol because I've done security oh, for yeah. years. People on weed aren't going to cause any problems. <laughs> They're gonna oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the pros and the cons, they don't even weigh. I mean, it's just totally not even there with the whole alcohol thing. It's just so bad, but I'm totally for everybody just, if somebody's sick and they can, they shouldn't be able to have a hard time getting something that's going to heal them. You know what I'm saying? Or like having, I, I know people that have children that have seizures that don't have seizures anymore and they don't have to take any prescription medication. And if you're on it's chemotherapy, crazy. it'll help your ass. Yeah, we don't even got to do that anymore. It's, it, you know, and you know, it, it, it is what it is. The world is changing and hopefully it's for the better, you know, and I've been pretty lucky to be part of the, the whole cannabis movement that's been, it's been good to work with people and learn about it and be in the, you know, on the farm and be up in the Redwood mountains and living in tents and stuff. It's awesome. I've had a, a great experience doing all of it. Met a lot of really cool people. Is there anyone that's, uh, that's currently in wrestling now in WWE or impact wrestling that, that you still talk to? Um, I love Medusa. I love Molly Holly. Um, I'm, I'm friends with everybody when I see them. Um, I kind of I kind of back away from wrestling because, I don't know, once I stopped doing all the indie shows here on the East Coast, I kind of went towards the whole cannabis thing and started having a whole new life with that out there. So I kind of backed away from um, the whole wrestling stuff. Uh, Jasmine Sinclair is a really good friend of mine. Love her to death. Um, who else do I talk to? Did uh, you have any heat of- when you came to WCW at first because... Do I have any what? Did you have any heat when you first came to WCW because, like, Macho Man got you in there and there can be some oh, I had secret heat. Yeah. I had a lot of secret heat, if you want to call it that. Yeah. A lot of people wouldn't, you know, show it to me, but I heard about it through the grapevine. A lot of the guy wrestlers were kind of jealous because they were paying for me to have first-class plane tickets and limos and, you know, real good hotel rooms and stuff like that. But they got to remember I was with Randy. You know what I mean? Like, And you paid a, and a price lot of people, for that. <laughs> I paid like, a big price for that and it wasn't easy. And on top of all that, you know, um, I ended up paying my dues in the end. I mean, like I said, I've been doing the Indies for the last 20 years. I've watched people that were just in the Indies with me, CK Punk, so many I could just name off. And now they're all, they've all been superstars. You know how proud I am of all of them. All the days that we've been on the road together, traveling from, you know, city to city, state to state, you know, every weekend. So every weekend for years and to see them actually get up there and do that, I am so proud of all of them. You know, it's just some of them were so young when they started and they were like in their teenage years, you know, now they're grown women and I was there for all that. So yeah, I'm like super proud of people. I'm really, really happy that they got their dream and like the way that I got into wrestling was through Randy. So I didn't have that passion that they had, not until later. And they had that right away and that's what they were. 
So what's your favorite memory of the wrestling business from the time that uh, you were in it? I always really, you know, like I was so proud of Randy. Um, he, you know, for, for as much crap as I went through with Randy, we had a lot, lot more better time. Right. It was at the end when the steroids started getting to his mind and making him paranoid and stuff like that. That was causing the problem. Um, but there's way more better times than there was bad. Uh, my favorite thing of wrestling of all my part of the whole thing was to, that was his thing. And, you know, like sometimes when we were going out, like the big problem with us, us was he was always in the spotlight. Like he paid, played, you know, minor league baseball first. And then, then he got into wrestling. So he really never was a normal dude where he like had a normal job and paid normal bills and lived a normal life. So he was kind of like a, like a child actor to me, kind of. So I kind of protected him. Like, I don't know, like there was things that he didn't, he couldn't even screw a light bulb in. He would call somebody over to do stuff like that. And it was sad because a grown man that age hadn't experienced drugs or anything yet. So when he got with me, it was like, he went off the deep end. It was like, he was, every time he came to my house, he was on something else. And I'm like, like, what are you on now? And it was like, I, I go, what are you trying to do? Kill yourself? And he's just like, he was experimenting with drugs because he'd never done it before like that. You know what I mean? So this story, cause there are some people that said when he was young wrestling in the Memphis territory that he would do Coke and stuff. So as far well, as he you was know, allergic to Coke, he was uh, allergic to Coke. So when he, he'd only did that a couple of times when he was with me and every time he did, his nose would blow up like a balloon and it'd be real red. I knew exactly. He didn't even tell me, he'd be like, oh, I do Coke yesterday. You know, it wasn't really a big deal, but the ecstasy and the steroids and the acid and stuff like that is where it started to get crazy. <laughs> I could only imagine him on acid. Oh my God. It was, it was a nightmare. There's, you know, there's so many stories about the way that he would, Oh Lord, he would scare me to death. He'd want to put me in his car and take me through these hell rides while he's tripping on acid. It was, it was definitely an experience. And a lot of people don't know the torture at the end that I was going through. I mean, when I was doing my best in front of the whole world, I was actually doing the worst I've ever done in my life. What is and it I about looked, acid that's appealing? I'm just curious because I've never done it. I'm just wondering. Like, I, I did it when I was a little time. kid, like when I was a teenager a million times, not as an adult. Yeah, I have too many responsibilities now. That's, it's not like you can go on some trip and get all jacked off when you got kids and stuff. <laughs> but see, he had never done that. He don't have kids. So he was like experimenting with stuff and he'd come to my house and go, I took this whole strip of these little pictures. And I'm like, you mean to tell me you just took a strip of acid and he, you know, I'd have to deal with them for the next 12 hours going completely crazy. Yeah, what happens on a trip? Just out of curiosity. Like what, what do you expect? Well, you see stuff, you, you know, it depends on how much you took and who you're around and what the elements are going around you. It depends on how you're going to trip. You know what I mean? It can be really fun, really happy or really sad or really crazy. You could totally like, not come back from it too. I've seen people that done so much acid. They're not the same. They went on a trip and never came home. Yeah. I've heard that as well. And you can I have mean, flashbacks like the, too, right? Like, yeah, he, the way that he passed away is it's really odd that when I heard how he died, um, it's so weird because there was visions of me when I was with him of us dying that way because, um, he, when he would leave his parents' house, he'd be so mad at Lanny. Like, I mean, every time we went over there, it was a hell ride on the way back from his parents because all I heard about from Sarasota all the way back to Tampa was about Lanny. And it was just horrible. His, his blood because pressure Lanny was Lanny like their friends that they were always... Well, no, no, he went over there. He'd see what Lanny was doing. Lanny wasn't doing what Randy wanted. And, you know, he's like, you're getting a freaking check for a hundred grand a year to sit on your ass. He's like, the least you could do is this, this, and this. Like he, you know, and so when we would leave his parents' house, I mean, he'd be beat red, his eyeballs be popping out, veins popping out, he's spitting when he's yelling and talking. I mean, it was bad. And it was like that every single time we left there. So and Randy I don't remember, wanted Lanny on the road. You're saying Lanny? Uh, no, he wanted him to be ready in yeah. case, just in case, yeah. you know, you know, Eric Bischoff called and said, hey, look, Lanny's getting a check. We need him today, even if it was just a work in production. Yeah. Any, anything. He want, Randy wanted him to be ready so Randy didn't look like an ass. Because Randy and then was like, a hard he doesn't do enough and all that and so on his and So we would hear, I'd hear about it the entire ride back from his parents. And then apparently when he was with his wife and he got into the wreck, that road that they got in that wreck on, 
that is the road that we took every time we left there and he'd be having that freak out. And you know what? His, his, his dad was sick. His mom wasn't feeling good. I wouldn't doubt it. He went there, didn't have something happened. And when he left there, had a freak out. Cause that's when his dad was dying or died already. I don't remember how it went, but that is the street. And it, sometimes he'd be going no shit, like 120 miles an hour around this, where that is, where they hit. And I, I just close my eyes and be like, I praying the whole time, like, God, please don't let him have a heart attack and kill us both and smash it on his wall. Like, and this was every single time. So you've seen him do acid, cocaine. I never steroids. seen him do cocaine, but I've seen him do everything but that. Not heroin, I'm going to assume. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. Just but recreation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it was just like his way to relieve. speed? Would he, no. Okay. Um, no, he would, I mean, he'd take his normal fat burners or whatever, but nothing yeah. like speed. But, um, no, he, w- he was experimenting with drugs at the end when he was with me so bad that he was giving me like $1,000 a week to go buy ecstasy pills and making me go to a strip club and go do it. How and do like, you spend $1,000 on ecstasy? Isn't it Because he cheap? can handful that uh, at a time. How did he live? <laughs> okay. That's- yeah, I mean, one time we went to a mail and I'm going to come all night but when me and him went and saw them at the ice palace in tampa he was rolling so hard in front of sarah uh the undertaker's wife at the time i didn't even want her to look at him because his eyeballs were rolling in the back of his head in front of blah 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 sponge that was the tampa dj i didn't want them to see him like that because sorry your phone's cutting out again this is the wwe show in tampa Huh? Your phone just cut out. Like, was okay, that the can WWE? Can you hear me now? Yeah, it cut out. It, it, I heard the Undertaker part, but it didn't. I didn't hear what. what I didn't. Okay, I didn't want um, Sarah or the Undertaker's wife at the time or Bubba the Love Sponge to ex- actually see how high he was because it was so bad. I was barely as big as that guy is. He's like a rhino to try to control him high on something. <laughs> it's 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 almost impossible. So like it was like the whole everything I could do at that concert to keep him safe and kind of away from everybody. Oh, it was horrible. What what concert was it? So it wasn't a wrestling event. The Marilyn Manson. The Marilyn Manson oh, concert. Did he like Marilyn Manson? That seems like something. That, it, well, that was my favorite singer. So he came. He okay. wouldn't let me go nowhere by myself. <laughs> oh, okay. How did he get so, along yeah. with Hogan when you were with him? Um, like a love hate thing. Yeah. And like uh, as much as he couldn't stand him, he loved him that much more. Okay. And then at the, in the back of my mind, I think it was more of a jealousy thing the whole time. Like he was so worried about what he was doing all the time. Like he'd sit there and talk all this crap about him. But then later on that day, be like, oh, we're going to a uh, Hawk's uh, French Hen restaurant to eat dinner. And I'm like, why do you want to go over there when you talk crap all day long and then you want to go hang out with him? I go, I honestly think you just want to sit there and see what he's up to. Like, he, he was weird with it. And you're talking about that you may have played a part in getting Randy on liking some of these drugs that he was taking when he was with you. How did you get involved in, in uh, taking some of those drugs? Um, when I met him, I didn't get him involved. When I met um, I had just moved from Rockford, Illinois. And at that time, I was actually going out with a drug dealer. And I left because of it. So when I moved to Tampa, I did not want no drugs in my life at all. Whether they were being sold, taken around me, I just had enough. And he was hiding doing the ecstasy from me. And I didn't know because he'd been doing it since I met him. So I didn't. Right. So you didn't know. Oh, are you there still? Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. Oh, it cut okay, out so for one like day, five seconds. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, that's my phone. Um, the first time that he ever sh- told me about it and introduced me to it, I had never been around ecstasy before because in my town where I'm from, it hadn't like hit up there yet. So when I got to Tampa, Florida, down in Ybor City, I'd see all these people in like G-holes and like foaming at the mouth, these little kids on the side of the road, and I'm like, what are they on? And he's like, Oh, they're on uh, ecstasy. And I'm like, boy, I would never want to touch that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So once he heard me say that, he wasn't going to give me the information, and that's what he does. So he, he hid it from me for, like, the first, like, five months. 
well, then he would always hang out with this guy, his friend. And I was like, why does that guy always come over just once in a while? You know what I mean? And then when the dude would leave, Randy would be all tweaked up. And then one day we went to a sushi place and we came home and he was just, he was on one. And I was like, uh, are you all right? And he was like, I got to tell you something. I haven't told you because I don't want you to like, you know, think bad of me or whatever. He's like, but I do ecstasy. I'm like, that stuff that those kids down in Ebor do. He's like, yeah, but they take too much and they're young and they, you know, he's like, I do it all the time. That way I don't drink and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, I loved him so much that he asked me if I wanted to do it. And I didn't want to, because like I told you, I didn't want nothing to do with that when I first got down there. And, uh, I, I did it because I loved him. And then we started doing it together. And it was so fun because at first it was fun. Yeah. We're doing it every once in a while, rolling on the beach or going to nightclubs and stuff like that. But then it got out of control. And like, I started to not, I couldn't do my workouts right. I wasn't sleeping right. I mean, I was having bad dreams, all kinds of weird stuff. Physically, I was getting from this stuff. And I told him, I'm like, I can't do it anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. He's like, well, okay, you don't have to. So he just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And he was getting worse and worse and worse on it. And then he got my sister taking it. And then, like, I'd go to sleep, and my sister was only 17 at the time, and him and her would be sitting on the couch all night rolling. And I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and they're still sitting there, like, five hours later. What do you do? And then like, he, what effect does it have? I, like, I'm, I know it makes sex better from what I understand, but, like, what? It's just that it makes everything better. Noise, food, touch, feel, um, music. It just enhances everything. So if it's you're watching kind of like TV, in a, it's going to make TV watching better if you're Randy. Yeah, everything. It's just like all your senses are like heightened and like everything is just, ah, uh, but the next day you have like the worst hangover, man. It takes me like two days to get better. I hated it. And then they just kept doing it and doing it. And then I got to the point where I just got sick to my stomach of looking at him. Like I couldn't even stare, stand him being in my house anymore because every time he was there, always, he was always on something. Right. So, and like he would be out in my barn and screaming and all the neighbors would be out there seeing, you know, he's a big dude and he's out there like running back and forth with his, his Hummer back and forth, putting holes in my grass and all kinds of stuff. All my neighbors seen this stuff and they were too scared to even call the police on him. Oh, because you didn't live together at that time? Well, I was living with him and then I moved out. I couldn't handle it. Okay. I got Oh, uh, you're cutting from him. him. You just kind of, I got my own place like five minutes down the beach from him. I, okay. I lived with him at first and then I couldn't do it anymore. Oh, I see. He, he started to, um, he didn't like when my kid was there and it wasn't homey at his house. And like, if any, he's got OCD. So if anything was out of place, it, it felt like you were living in a hotel room. You weren't allowed to leave nothing lay. It wasn't, it was very uncomfortable. Did he have a maid or did he clean it himself? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And uh, the maid that he had, he had for like, I think, 10 years. Okay. And then I started to notice, uh, this is how I found the cameras in my house. Um, I started to notice uh, her stealing stuff. And I told Randy about it. And the only people that was ever in his house was me and him and the maid. And I'm like, I hate to tell you, but I think she's stealing. And he's like, she would never do something like that. And I'm like dude, the only people in this house is me and you and her. And stuff is really missing. And he's like, well, what kind of stuff? I go, I don't know, dumb stuff. Post-it notes, Sharpie markers, paper, just little dumb stuff, but it was missing. Yeah. Bottles of wine, you know, stuff like that. So then I think he put a couple booby traps out and caught her. Huh. So then he would always do so much nice things for me. I told him, because was, his house was spotless. So she would more or less come over to get paid $200 every time she came over to clean the clean. Right. So I told him, you do so many nice things for me. Why don't you just let me do a vet's job? And then I'll just do this when you're gone at the gym or whatever. And he's like, okay, okay. He was so into it. And then, um, like, I don't, I'm not a snooper. Like if you got, I would never look through your phone, your wallet. I don't give a shit. If if you're doing something, you're not supposed to be. And I have to actually go that far and dig through your stuff. I don't want to be around you. Yeah. Like literally I don't. Well, I would not look through anything at his house. Well, one day in the broom closet, there would be these little keys and it looked like a fuse box. And some days the little keys would be in there and some days the little keys would be out of there. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, what is that a fuse box? And then I'm like, the only people that come to this house is me and him. So he's the one that's taking these keys in and out, not me. So he was gone one day 
And I was like, you know what? I'm going to see if this is a fuse box. That's what I thought it was. Okay. And I went to open that little box. And when I opened it, I had to like, seriously, because I have bad eyes, I had to like zoom in on what I was looking at. This dude had little cameras. They were like black and white, little tiny screens. There was like eight of them, four on the top and four on the bottom. He had every place in my house being videotaped from his, his house. Okay. Wow. So he's been watching me because he would call me and be like, I used to have a, a Twinkie stash under my bed. And he would call me and be like, ooh, how's those Twinkies taste? I'm like, how does this dude always know when I'm sneaking a Twinkie? <laughs> like, he always knew what I was doing. And I'm like, he's got ESP or, you know, like, how does he know? So when I found those, he, I could hear him coming up the hallway. And I hurried up and shut that little door, stuck the keys back in there, stood up and said, take me home right now. And he's like, why, why? My face was literally white. Like, I had seen a ghost. Yeah. Like, I was so afraid of him at that point. I went back home and told my sister what I just seen. And she's like, you mean to tell me that he's been videoing me in here? I go, yeah. In the bathroom, in your bedroom, everything. Wow. So everything that we've been doing in this house since we moved in here, he's been sitting in his house watching us while we're here. Did you speak to an attorney about that? No, I wanted, I was so afraid of him. And I was so sick to my stomach when I found that out. And I still had to do some more wrestling shows with him. On my contract, I had to make those shows. And there was still like a couple more Slim Jim dates we had to do. It was everything in my power to have to sit around him. He still didn't know why I was acting like that. Okay. Wow. I didn't tell him that I seen that. I just wanted away from him. So I moved out of that house and I had a moving company move me into another house and do it in the middle of the night so he couldn't have anybody follow me. So I was like a prisoner in my own house. Because you probably could have sued him for quite a lot of money and won if... Uh... I was, at that time, I was so young and hurt and heartbroken and just sick to my stomach. I swear to God, I, I instantly hated his guts. I he never ever wanted to see him again. I, was, I wasn't mad that he was videoing me. I was mad that he didn't trust me. Right, because you had been very loyal to him and put up with. Uh, oh yeah, put up with so much crap, and then you're gonna you got my little sisters in here, and you're watching her take a shower. Like, dude, who does that? That's really actually. Uh, I won't even comment on that. A so, pedophile, a pervert. Yeah, exactly. That's I'll comment on that. That's you know, I it's crazy because I was a very um, mature young girl when I was young. You know, I had a baby young. I've been on my own since I was sixteen years old. I have grew up so fast, you know? So when I got with Randy, a lot of people kind of weirded out at that because he was so much older than me. But in actuality, I was so much more mature than him. Like he was such a little kid around me. It was so weird. It was like, I took care of everything when we were together and I was so young. And when I, when I would think about it back then, I never thought, you know, look how young I am and look how old he is. I never thought that because I have like an old soul. But now that I'm older and I look back at pictures of us, I'm thinking, what was the age holy difference? Cr I don't know how old he is. Um, it was like 20 something years, yeah. wow. you know, and it was crazy because when we were together, I never pictured him one day older than me because he was so immature. Right. And, you know, like when the whole Stephanie McMahon thing came out and all this and that, and he told me about it, you know, it didn't, it didn't even, I didn't even blink. Because she was apparently underage at that time. Yes. Like 16 or something. Allegedly, yeah. Well, the thing is, is like, you know, and then, you know, like I ended up, like he told me he wanted to have sex with my sister. Was so that she, was, was the end of the relate. That was the very last thing that happened, huh? Was she over 18 yet at that point? No, she was 17. Right. Okay. And, and so, and he's like, when you're sleeping, I was just going there and have sex with her. And when she's sleeping, I was going there and have sex with you. And I said, you know what, get out of my house. And then I thought he wouldn't remember that the next day because he was on drugs. The next day he came back saying that same crap. I'm like, dude, get away from us. He was born in 1952. I just looked it up. Okay, I was born in 76. Okay, so he's uh, over 20 years older than you, I guess. 20. Yeah, and you know, like, I never seen it when I was with him. But now that I'm older... And, you know, that'd be like me. I'm going to be 43 years old going out with a 20-year-old. I couldn't even see myself going out with a 20-year-old. I'd have nothing in common with them. What would we talk about? Nothing. Like, I don't know. I That's just me, though. 
Was he harder to live with than a rock star? Because you obviously dated numerous rock stars as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would never, like, I'll tell you what, you know, I've been around the rock scene and the wrestling scene. I don't think I'd ever date another wrestler for the long as I was. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, just don't want to be part of the scene. I mean, you know, I do and I don't. It's weird because, like I said, you're, it'll always be part of me. And when I go to the wrestling shows, I love seeing the fans. I love seeing my friends that are wrestlers, you know, because that's like our time to see each other. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, you know, a reunion for all of us to hang out and have dinner or, you know, kick it with each other, see how each other's doing and stuff like that. So it's fun for us, you know, but it, it, it gets, it gets old. Right. You know, I haven't been on TV in how many years? And I'm so surprised that I still get booked and people still, you know, I appreciate it so much. Like I actually care for my autograph and want to come and talk to me. That really is very, very nice. And, you know, I'm very blessed. Well, let's bring that up right now for people listening to this. If they want to book you, is there uh, any way they can contact you through social media or anything? Or do you have an email? Yeah, I actually just started. Um, I'm pretty, I'm like a caveman when it comes to anything with the internet, which I need to start like getting on my game. Uh, I just started an Instagram page. It's George Frankenstein 56. And then I also have George Frankenstein on Facebook. And um, uh, you can get a hold of me like that. And if you want to book me, um, you can just get a hold of me and uh, Facebook's probably easiest. So you answer your messages and you do autograph yeah, dances, right? Mainly. Yeah, I do all that stuff. I mean, like if it's it's worth me going and, you know, and I mean, I don't charge a lot for autograph sessions anymore, especially if I have to stay in a hotel and, uh, and they have to pay for my hotel and food and all that. You know what I mean? I'm pretty easy to work with. And if, uh, so you have, uh, do you have a Twitter or anything like that? Uh, I, you know what? I don't, I don't. And your food blogs, where can people find those? I just started actually doing it. I'm just now okay. starting to take pictures of the food that I cook. And I'm trying to, you know, like have some friends of mine help me to teach me what I have to do to start, you know, videoing it and what we're going to be doing and stuff like that. I guess the gist of what everything is doing. So that's my new project. <laughs> Well, you always had a great physique, and uh, obviously you're into food by the, your new project. Uh, do you have any general food advice for... Uh, well, I'm trying to um, also do some cannabis-infused food, and um, you can book me to do cannabis-infused parties where I do all the cooking and um, stuff like that. I'm also into that as well. Okay. So, What's your favorite uh, cannabis-infused treat to have um i like the gummy bears as long as they're not too strong i mean i've actually man I've, I've had some really bad experiences with like the chocolate bar and brownies that i made myself that put too much in there and i ended up having oh my god i almost had to call 911 to ride that out <laughs> it's horrible because you could think you're having a heart you could convince yourself you're having a heart attack sometimes I guess. oh no this was so bad i was just like <laughs> i was projectile throwing up and peeing my pants at the same time oh wow that was that's uh, a bad one overdose <laughs> for sure oh yeah i did i overdosed myself but yeah that's i'm doing stuff like that so like um you know i guess i was gonna start a cookbook for autism and i started it years ago and then when I got divorced, I had left all my recipes and all that stuff at his house. And, you know, stuff gets lost when you get a divorce. So I probably have to start all over again. But right now I'm looking for getting a food truck starting for next year so we can do some video vlogging with the food truck as well. I live right um, by Point Pleasant Beach. So I'm sure there's a bunch of fun stuff on Jersey Shore to be videoing with the people down there while I'm doing my food truck. Right. Well, thanks a lot for talking to us. Uh, do you want to talk about your book one last time? It's You're working on it right now with Matthew. Yes. Um, I, I don't know exactly what the projection date is before Christmas so that you guys can order the book, uh, you know, for Christmas or whatever. Um, I know me and Matthew are going to put it on uh, Kindle. And right now I'm actually just going through some of my stuff to try to find the pictures to go with the stories that I'm talking about. And since I've moved so many times, it's like, find a needle in a haystack to get some of these pictures. But yeah, it's definitely pretty interesting. It's more or less 43 years of my life. That's been completely insane. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot to talk about. I mean, even Matthew, he's like, this is just crazy. <laughs> and I told him today, I'm like, I still have more stuff to put in there, you know? So, we're, I mean, it's definitely, if you're a wrestling fan and you know anything about 
Randy and or if you're a Misfit fan, uh, Glenn Danzig fan, any of that stuff, it's going to be in there about the touring and all the cool experiences and fun stuff. And like you said, I don't throw anybody under the bus, but I don't lie either. No, you seem, <laughs> you seem honest. Uh, one last question here, being with uh, Randy Savage and these rock stars, what's the craziest fan experience that you've uh, been a part of? Like, Just like in, like absolutely out of their mind fans. Well, one time I had, um, when, me and, when me and Randy turned heel on Rey Mysterio, um, that night somebody threw a 9-volt battery in my face and it hit my jawbone. And I thought literally from my cheek down, I was missing my whole face. Like, I, it was, I thought I got shot. And they must have thrown it from, like, the third tier of the arena because it had some, like, velocity. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then uh, when, when we went to leave and we got the car from underneath the arena... I don't remember what state we were in, but uh, the fans were so mad about what happened that they flipped our car over while we were in it driving out of there. It was really scary. I mean, there was, you seen people with knives. It was, and he's like, just be calm, be calm. You know, he's like, I got you, I got you, don't worry. But I mean, it was like seriously crazy that uh, there was a couple people that when I first walked out into the ring, I seen them and uh, they were saying, hey, George, and they were so nice and waving. Those were the same people flipping the car over saying, I'm going to kill you. I was like, oh, my God. Like, this is really getting real. And, you know, he had told me stories about how they used to stab his dad and uh, how when he was a little boy, there would be, like, after his dad would wrestle, there would be, you know, pocket knives that people were throwing in the, you know, the, the ring while his dad was, you know, wrestling and shoes and whatever people got they can throw, you know. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. That's so, yeah, that was definitely. And, and my main thing about wrestling, my biggest I can end with this um, is uh, you remember when you asked what my favorite thing was about the whole thing Yeah, was wa watching Randy as being not only my boyfriend, but he was my best friend watching him. It, it had nothing to do with me, but it was like to watch him in his glory, like do what he loved, be who he was and, and be so great at it. it. Every day that we would do a match and he would get up on the, you know, when he would get ready for the big elbow and he'd stand there. Yeah. and get his balance every time I would pray in my mind just just pull it out perfect you know like I'd be praying for him and then when he'd go to actually do the elbow I would just be so proud of him and whenever you see me like jump at the matches and stuff that was all real like I was really really proud of him and those are like my most best memories of wrestling watching him in his glory doing his thing I never really thought about myself through the whole thing I think I was too young you know well, that's a great story, and uh, we thank you very much for uh, for speaking with us. Hopefully, we'll have you on again once your book is actually out. And uh, we'll Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Like, I probably do some book signings and stuff, and that's another thing. If people want to book me, when I do have the book that comes out and everything, that'll be cool, you know, do some book signings and do maybe some Q&A, question answering type stuff, you know, with the fans. Or <clears throat> another thing I was thinking about getting into – and I have a lot of stories that are hilariously funny. And um, I went to Nick Foley's stand-up, and I've got some stories that are just out there. <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking about doing that. I was talking with uh, the King of Connecticut on that, and he said that he had done some stuff with Larry Sabisco lately. So yeah, maybe he can help me. Yeah, and he too for comedy, I believe. Yeah, like I always said I wanted to do it, and I used to live in L.A., so I would go by the comedy store all the time and, uh, I've actually met Polly Shore and stuff like that, and I've got a cousin who's actually doing stand up now. So, I mean, I don't think I wouldn't be too bad at it. Well, I let's hear a joke. Let's hear something funny. Oh my God, I, you got me on the spot right now. I, <laughs> I'm sitting here like pulling, but oh, I have to think of some stuff. I'm so out of it right now. I didn't even know me and you were going to do this. <laughs> no, neither did I. But at least it's easy to talk to you. You have, uh, you definitely have some great stories. But you got to finish this off with something funny since you you talked it up so much. Oh man, let me think of what he would say. <laughs> well, there's a funny story I could tell you about that. Every time something's bad, I always think of this, so I could tell the fans this one. Every time we would go to a drive-through and we were real, real in a bad, bad rush, like to get on an airplane or whatever. Say we hadn't ate and we had to go to McDonald's just because it was like out of necessity. That was the only thing on the way to the airport or wherever. When we go through the drive thru and he'd order the food, once the people that were in McDonald's or whatever fast food place it, it was, 
they would notice that it was him, they would hold the food hostage. Like he'd already paid for it, but they'd keep it until he gave everybody in there. Now we're in a hurry as it is. And, you know, like give people autographs and say hi and take pictures. Oh, it was horrible. And he would just yell all the time. People can do what they want to do. And like every time I'm having like a really hard situation in the back of my head to this day, I hear him saying that. And it is just too funny. Oh, my God. People can do what they want to do. So, like, if you're at a place and they don't want to give you a pack of ketchup, they can give you that ketchup. (laughs) Oh, it's funny. If You had to be there, but he was something else, man. Wow. Yeah, that's got to be hard, actually. People don't think about how hard it is to be a celebrity dealing with fans like that every, every time you go out in public. Yeah, he had been sued, like, I think 13 times, too. From fans saying that, you know, he hit their kid or I don't know. I don't know. But he was telling me about that. He was just like, you can't do anything without them wanting to sue you, you know. But yeah, definitely. I've got a million stories, that's for sure. I don't know how to put them into how I would do the whole stand-up thing, but Matthew's going to help me with that. So we'll see how it works. Yeah, I'm sure he'll do a good job helping you, and I'm sure he'll do a great job. Uh... They're definitely funny stories that everybody will enjoy. You guys will get a kick out of them because they are just insane. And a lot of them aren't going to be in my book because just so many, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure it could be the size of an encyclopedia if you put everything in there. Oh, yeah. And it's funny because all the stories that I have are about everybody you guys know, you know what I mean? That's cool. Well, I really look forward to that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for watching The Hannibal TV. Please help me out and like this video. Then click the subscribe and get notifications buttons so you don't miss any of my latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Facebook at The Hannibal TV for more live streams and videos. And while you're at it, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Hannibal TV.